I'd like to share briefly with you about three properties of real numbers. The first one is called the, the commutative laws. The commutative laws work for both addition and for multiplication. And all they mean for addition is that you can take two things and add them together in any order. A plus B, B plus A, you get the same results. For example, 2 plus 7 and 7 plus 2 are both equal to 9. It's the commutative law of addition, and I can add in any order. One of the ways that we're going to use this as we go along is that we're going to combine or simplify an algebraic expression by adding like terms. For example, 2a plus 7a is equal to 9a. What I do is I add their coefficients of those like terms. So the variable portion has to be the same in order for me to add them. Since these are both a's, I can add their coefficients, the 2 and the 7, to say that I have 9 of those a's. I could also do it in the other order. 7a plus 2a also will give me 9a. The commutative law of multiplication says that I can multiply in any order. So I can take a times b, or I can take b times a, and I still get the same results. For example, 2 times 7 is the same thing as 7 times 2, both of those equaling 14. The next law is called the associative laws. I'm going to try to abbreviate that quickly. So the associative, I'll write this one out full here, and of both addition and multiplication. And they say that if I have... Um, three or more numbers that are grouped, and I'm just going to use an example, a numerical example here. If I have 2 plus 3 and 4, and I'm adding them together, but I've grouped the 2 and the 3, I could change the grouping orientation. I could group the 3 and the 4, and I would get the same results. Order of operations here says that I should add the 2 and the 3 first and get a 5, then add that 4. Over here, order of operations says that I should add the 3 and the 4 first and get a 7, and then add this 2. But either way, um, the associative law says that the grouping symbols can be around any variety of groups, given that you have the same terms that are being added together, and you'll still get the same results, and, and that is um, 9 in this particular case. So I could group 2 times 3 in a set of parentheses and then multiply it by 4, or I could group the 3 and the 4 and then multiply it by 2. Here, in the parentheses first, 6 times 4 is 24. Over here, parentheses first, 12 times 2, also 24. The associative laws have to do with the placement of parentheses in the same grouping of terms and or factors. Finally, the last law is called the distributive law. The distributive law is very important in algebra, and I'm going, to, I'm going to give an example of this numerically. If I had a factor out in front of a grouping symbol that had uh, addition or subtraction in that, and it doesn't even matter if there's two terms or more, the distributive law says that I can take that 2 times that 3, and in this case, because I'm adding that 2 times that 4, and I would get the same result. So numerically, let's look at this as uh, via order of operations. Over here, order of operations says you should do what's in the parentheses first, which is add 3 and 4 and get 7, and then multiply it by 2. Over here, order of operations says that you multiply first. So 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 4 is 8, and then you'd add. Either way, you get 14 as a result for this problem. Where we're going to use this, an example of where we're going to use the distributive law, is we won't have arithmetically just a 3 and a 4 in those parentheses. We're going to have variables involved. An example of that might be 2 times x plus 5. And that means to take the 2 times the x, this is how we wrote it just a minute ago, take the 2 times the x, I've got a plus sign here, I might have a minus sign sometimes, and then take the 2 times the 5. And the results will be here, 2 times x is just written as 2x, 
and 2 times 5 is just written as 10. And I have distributed the 2 through this binomial, as we call it, something with two terms. Another example, 3 times x plus 4 would give me 3x plus 3 times 4 is 12. If I had a minus sign, let's just do one more. If I had a minus sign in there, if I had 7 times x minus 3, I'd have 7 times x, which is 7x, and 7 times a negative 3, essentially. That's a negative 3. I'm looking for my red pen. Um, I can think of it like that, plus a negative 21, or I'm just going to write that as 7x minus 21. So I won't bother with that swipe, swipe in there. I'm going to think of that as um, a minus 3 or a negative 3, and 7 times that negative 3 is that negative 21.